All right, we're going to continue by talking about combinations of resistors, and we talked about this a little bit in the last video, but we're going to talk about resistors in series. This is just one resistor after another. Before we do this, I want to, I want to look at um, a couple of, of rules that we're going to have to kind of look at as we go through these things. They're called Kirchhoff's rules. They are um, helpful for looking at how to analyze circuits, how to look at uh, current through and voltage dropped across resistors in a circuit. Um, the first one is called uh, the loop rule. And what this says is that all voltages in a circuit, all voltages in a loop in a circuit, must add to zero. And we'll see that here in a second. The other thing we're going to look at is what we call the node rule. And this says two things. The first is that current into a node is equal to current out. And we'll talk about what that means. And then the last thing, or the other thing that the node rule tells me is that current is constant in a single wire. And we're going to really look at um, for resistors in series, we're going to pay attention to this one, and we're going to pay attention to this one. This is more for the next thing that we're going to look at. So let's look at a simple series circuit. We're not going to use any numbers right now. Um, we'll save examples for class time. Um, so we have a voltage at this battery, and we're going to go through resistor 1 and resistor 2. And this is a circuit that we've all sort of put together before. So, <clears throat> if we look at this, this is what I'm going to consider to be a single wire. It doesn't split off at any point. So looking at this, I can say in series that the current is constant. What that means is that the current here at this point, the current at this point, the current through each resistor, the current here, and the current through the battery all has the same value. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Uh, the total current is equal to the current through resistor 1 is equal to the current through, sorry, the current through resistor 2. Um, and that's something that we get from this. Now, the loop rule, <clears throat> and this is what we mean by that. Let's start here, and if we go around in a loop, okay, as we start here and go around the loop, we pick up the voltage of the battery, our total voltage, okay, um, we lose some voltage across R1, uh, we lose some voltage across resistor 2, and then we come back in. The loop rule tells me that when I add this all together, um, when I add the voltage that I gain from the battery and take away the voltage I drop across resistor 1 and the voltage I drop across resistor 2, all of that has to add up to zero. Basically that means we start off with the voltage of the battery on this side, go all the way around and end up with voltage equals to zero on this side. It's something we've already said, we're just saying it in a new way. Um, another way that we're going to write this is that the total voltage, the voltage of the battery, the total voltage here, is equal to um, voltage dropped across the first resistor plus the voltage dropped across the second resistor. And so we see that in series, uh, what we're going to say is that the voltages, the voltage adds. So we're going to take these two things and we're going to use Ohm's law. If you remember, Ohm's law is V equals IR. We're going to take Ohm's law and plug it into this equation. 
So what we're going to do is say, all right, voltage total, that's going to be I total times resistance total is equal to I1 times resistance 1 plus I2 times resistance 2. Okay, so looking at this, since I know that I total, I1, and I2 are all equal to each other, they all cross out. And what I see is that the total resistance in this circuit is equal to resistance 1 plus resistance 2. It's sort of simple addition of resistors. Very straightforward. And this is what we expect. The more resistors I add on here, the greater the, the resistance of the circuit becomes. Um, the charge traveling through here has to experience resistor 1, and it's going to have to experience resistor 2. All right, that's resistors in series. This is what we've been dealing with so far, so let's look at resistors in parallel. Okay, and I'm going to write, write down, well, we'll remember our Kirchhoff rules. So in parallel, what that means is we've got our battery. We've got resistor 1. And we have resistor 2 right next to it. It's in parallel. It's, it's, so the way this works, um, let's say I have current coming from the battery. Well, that current could go through resistor 1. It's going to come back all the way around. That's one loop. We see that it splits, but that's one loop of wire. So what that tells me is that resistor 1 loses voltage 1, which is equal to the voltage of the battery. All of the voltage of the battery is dropped across that. But I could also start here and go this way. Go through resistor 2 and then back to the battery. And in that case, the voltage dropped across resistor 2 would be equal to the voltage of the battery. So the first thing that we see about resistors in parallel um, is that the voltages are equal in each branch. So the total voltage, I'll say total voltage, the total voltage is equal to the voltage dropped across resistor 1 is equal to the voltage dropped across resistor 2. In this case, the voltages are equal. Now, um, we need to look at what happens with the current. And we can kind of see it here, but this is where the node rule comes in. This is a node, all right? And if we look at that, we have current coming into it from the battery here and here. We're going to call this the total current. And what we see is that splits off. Some goes to current 1 sum goes to current 2. The node rule tells me that the total current is equal to current 1 plus current 2. It's just like a river that splits off into multiple streams. I don't end up with more or less water. It's the same amount. <clears throat> so here we see that the current adds. And again we're going to take Ohm's law, and this time we're going to write it for I. I equals V over R, and we're going to substitute that in right here. So I total is going to become V total over R total, and that's equal to V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. Now, because we know that the voltages are equal, that crosses out, and we have this weird way of adding up our resistors. 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Now that's a strange thing. This, this, this reciprocal adding thing means that the total resistance is less, is less than R1 or R2. 
Um, and the reason that happens is if we look at the total current, the total voltage, and the total resistance, well, okay, the total voltage isn't going to change. But when I add another resistor into the thing, when I add resistors, I end up getting more and more and more current. So the more and more resistors I add, the more and more and more current has to come from the battery to supply those resistors. So what happens is, since the current is going up, the resistance has got to go down. It's confusing, but we're going to play with it a lot. In fact, we're going to do an example uh, right now. So let's say we've got a battery, and it is a, it's a 12-volt battery. And we're going to go first to one resistor. That's 6 ohms. And then to another resistor. That's 3 ohms. Now what I want to do is first to find uh, the total the current going through each resistor. So this one, current through resistor 1, is going to be um, well 12 volts divided by 6 ohms. So current 1 is going to be 2 amps. And current 2 is, again, all 12 volts are dropped off across that. So 12 volts over 3 ohms, that's going to be 4 amps. So I have to have 2 amps running through this and 4 amps running through this, which means that my total current, I total has to be 6 amps. And we're going to look at this two different ways. Okay. Using this information that we just found, I can say that the total resistance is going to be the total voltage, 12 volts, over uh, the total current coming out of the battery, which we said was 6 amps. In that case, my total resistance comes out to be 2 ohms. Even though the first resistor is 6 and the second resistor is 3. Well, that fits with what we just said right here. The other way we're going to do it is to say that 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So 1 over R total is 1 over 6 plus 1 over 3. In order to add those together, we need a common denominator. That common denominator is 6. 3 can go into 6. So if I multiply each end of this by 2, I get 2 over 6 plus 1 over 6, giving me 3 over 6. Okay, so if 1 over R total equals 3 over 6, I take the reciprocal of that and I get R total is equal to 6 over 3, which is again 2 ohms. This is how we add resistors in series and in parallel. <clears throat> the last thing we're going to look at today is what to do when we have combinations of resistors. How we're going to analyze a circuit that has a whole lot going on. So let's say we've got a 10 volt battery. We're going to run through a resistor that is 2 ohms. We're going to run through a resistor that is 3 ohms. And we're going to have two resistors here. And we'll say just for fun that each of these resistors is also 3 ohms. So we're going to look at how to find how much current is running through each one of these. So what we have to do is put these two together first. They're our most complicated branch. So looking at this, we are going to... Just add them together. They're in series. So our circuit becomes, that stays the same, 2 ohms. And that stays the same, 3 ohms. This is now 6 ohms. Then we're going to combine these two. When we combine those two, 
nothing changes here about the 2 ohms. Now let's you do the math on your own. But we end up 1 third plus 1 sixth is 3 sixths. Take the reciprocal of that. We end up with 2 ohms. And the last thing we're going to do is combine those two. And that leaves me with 10 volts and 4 ohms. So I can say about this thing that the total resistance of the circuit is 4 ohms. The total voltage is still 10 volts. And if I wanted to, I could find the total current. And I'm going to need the total current. The total current <clears throat> is 10 volts over 4 ohms, which is 2.5 amps. So what I'm going to do is take the fact that I know the total current here is 2.5 amps. I'm going to say, well, these two are in series, and I know the current has to be the same in series between total current and current 1 and current 2. So this total current is 2.5 amps. So what that's going to tell me is how much voltage is dropped on each one. So here, the voltage is equal to I, 2.5 amps, times the resistance of 2.5 amps times 2 ohms. And that voltage is going to come out to be 5 volts. So for each of those, I lose 5 volts. What that means is the voltage here is 5. I lose 5 across this resistor. The voltage here is 5. I lose 5 across this, and I'm down to 0. So here I still know that this has lost 5 volts and that it has 2.5 amps running through it. That's not going to change the whole time. So I got 2.5 amps running through this. I lose 5 volts. What that means is that here and here, this point is at 10 volts. I've just lost 5, so each one of these points is at 5 volts. So across this 3 and this 6 each, I'm losing 5 volts. So that means I can figure out the current here. That's going to be 5 volts over um, 3 ohms. That's 1.66 amps. And here, it's going to be 5 volts over 6 ohms which comes out to be 0.8333333. So I know that here, we just figured it out, I've lost 5 volts, and that our current is 1.6 amps. And then here, well, here all I know is that the current is 0.833 amps. Well, I can find the voltage. That's the current times the resistance. So 0.833 times 3 gives me 2.5 volts dropped across each one of these. And that's how we would figure out how everything worked um, for this massive combination of resistors. We're going to play a lot with this. So um, if this doesn't click just yet, that's, that's fine.